Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast for the Corn Belt. I'm Andrew Pritchard, meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Well, as we look at the hazards map here on this Tuesday morning, we've got two areas of wintry weather that we're watching, one across central Nebraska and another one across the far northern Great Lakes. So you take a look at the satellite picture, you can see the disturbance right now that's bringing the snow to that northern portions of the Great Lakes, northern Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan, northern portions of Wisconsin. What you don't see yet is uh, what will be triggering the snow here across central portions of Nebraska, and that's an area of high pressure. It's going to be slowly sliding south across the region here, and we'll talk about that in depth in a moment because it's just about all that we have to talk about over the next five days or so across the Corn Belt and what's going to be a relatively quiet end to the week. So let's look at the radar picture here on Tuesday morning. Again, that snow sliding off across por uh, portions of uh, northeastern Wisconsin into the UP of Michigan, northern uh, Michigan seeing some of that. A lot of what you're seeing on the radar right here not actually making its way to the ground. That's some light precipitation here that uh, mostly is being uh, dealt with by some dry air in the lower levels of the, uh, the atmosphere. So again, across central Illinois, not seeing any precipitation there. Perhaps a couple light sprinkles across portions of central uh, Missouri back toward the uh, Oklahoma and Kansas border. Now, as we take a look at the temperatures, you can see a couple of frontal boundaries across the region. One is a well-defined front here from the Great Lakes into the Central Plains, and then we've got another Arctic front here on the, the leading edge of an area of high pressure sagging south across the Canadian Prairie into the northern portion of the U.S. Now, as we watch this temperature loop over the next 24 to 48 hours, again, we're going to watch this front uh, with uh, cooler air coming in across the Canadian Prairie. We're going to see some convergence set up right here across central portions of Nebraska. Uh, you see a well-defined front developing right there, and that's where we've got winds coming out of the south on the south side of that front, and then the, the cold Arctic air coming out of the north. And so again, right along that frontal boundary, that's where we're going to set up some precipitation as we head into uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Now you can see the convergence really well when we look at the wind gusts here. So this will do a couple of things. First, showing us the strong convergence. Again, look at the strong northeasterly flow on the north side of this. Let me change the color here so you can actually see it. Flow out of the northeast on the, uh, the north side of the frontal boundary and then coming out of the due south, uh, south of that. So right across central Nebraska, kind of along Interstate 80 here, uh, if we're just to take this uh, 3 a.m. snapshot here uh, from Wednesday morning. Uh, but again, we get convergence, that's where we've got winds coming together at the surface, doing something like that. That forces the air upward through the column of the atmosphere. That leads to those cloud covers and eventually the precipitation. So again, that strong area of convergence at the surface, that's going to help generate that precipitation. So let's look at the precipitation forecast then with the high resolution NAM model. Precipitation type forecast, we'll go ahead and come back here and click through time. Watching first. The snow departing across uh, the northern Great Lakes. This makes its way out of here by the end of the, uh, by the middle of the day, really on Tuesday. Maybe some lake effect uh, snow still falling across northern portions of Michigan, but by and large, this storm system makes its way out through the day today. We're then quiet as we head through the overnight. Maybe some light snow flurries beginning to develop across portions of southern South Dakota into Nebraska, uh, but it's as we head into the day on Wednesday where we we'll really start to see the precipitation ramping up across this region. Uh, this is what things look like here around the lunch hour on Wednesday, uh, intensifying then as we head into the evening before sagging south across Kansas Wednesday night into Thursday morning. This would be sunrise on Thursday morning now, uh, this snow making its way off across southern and eastern portions of Kansas uh, before really begin to, beginning to dissipate as the, uh, the main area of low pressure begins to shift off to the south and to the east across the southeastern U.S. So. A little corridor of snow here expected across portions of uh, primarily Nebraska back in towards western Kansas and eastern uh, Colorado right in this area where we're talking about primarily three to six inches, maybe some locally higher amounts, especially as we get toward the front range here in portions of southern Colorado. And then as you look off toward the north, uh, looking at the snow totals there, higher where we could see some lake effect influence across portions of the UP uh, into northern Michigan, but generally talking about three to six inches of additional snow accumulation there as well as we head through the next 24 hours. Now, as we deal with all of this, we will have to keep an eye on those wind chill temperatures. We'll start to see those begin to plummet across the Dakotas as we head through the overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. Uh, tomorrow morning, likely waking up to, to uh, wind chill temperatures anywhere from 20 to 30 degrees below zero across portions of North Dakota into Minnesota. Those will expand as we head through the day on Wednesday, getting into Wednesday night and Thursday morning. As we wake up Thursday morning, seeing those sub-zero uh, overnight uh, or sub-zero wind chills, uh, beginning to div uh, dip into portions of uh, Nebraska, Iowa, even northern Illinois, seeing those wind chills around negative five as we wake up on Thursday morning. And so again, combined with some snow across this region, that's the region or the reason for the winter weather advisory across portions of central Nebraska. 
So let's step back. Let's take a look at where we're headed then as we head into the weekend and beyond. Uh, as we go ahead and let's step back once more, I misclicked here. Uh, watching the upper level flow at 300 millibars across North Dakota. Again, here is the trough uh, diving into the region right now uh, that is bringing the cooler temperatures into the region, a kind of a broader trough across the region. We'll start to build a ridge as we get into the late part of the week. This is what allows the warm up as we head into the later part of the week into early next week. Before our next pair of systems here, we've got a couple of waves we're watching. The first one makes its way in here. You can kind of see it uh, right here on Sunday into Monday. That's going to be the first one that brings us a chance of precipitation right now. It looks like the best chance across the, uh, the Ohio River Valley into the Mid-South. And then as we take it a bit further, we'll watch another wave come in from the north. This is kind of the second wave that's coming and diving in now across the Mid-Mississippi Valley as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. So all of that is to say that the uh, the big player here is going to be this area of high pressure that slowly makes its way from the Canadian Prairie across the Corn Belt over the next four to five days that's really going to shut things down. We'll be talking about that chance for some wintry weather across Nebraska and Kansas here Wednesday into Wednesday night, but otherwise we'll be watching quiet conditions across the Corn Belt. So we look at the precipitation, uh, uh, precipitable water, I should say, the moisture content here, you can actually at some points see the flow around that area of uh, high pressure, that clockwise flow right there. And as we get into the uh, the end of the weekend, into early next week, this area of high pressure begins to uh, finally move off to the southeast. You can see the response here as well as we get into here Friday and Saturday, that area of high pressure moving over the southeastern U.S. Clockwise flow around that begins to pump moisture back into the, uh, the mid-Mississippi Valley, into the central U.S., We'll then watch for low pressure to develop across parts portions of uh, the southern plains as we get into Sunday and Monday, bringing in a shot of cooler air on the backside, uh, but more importantly, bringing that next chance for some precipitation to portions of the Corn Belt. So a quick look then at the uh, the precipitation forecast from the European model, quickly stepping through the next couple of days. We talked about this in depth, watching the snow across portions of the Great Lakes as we go through the day today, then watching for snow to develop across portions of Nebraska and Kansas as we head into Wednesday into Thursday. So here we are Wednesday evening, Thursday now, watching this area of high pressure move into the Corn Belt. Now we're watching the precipitation be forced way off to the south uh, near the Gulf Coast as we head through the end of the week into the weekend. We are now into Friday, Saturday, still quiet across the Corn Belt, Sunday, and now getting into Sunday evening. This would be 6 p.m. on Sunday evening, watching this area of low pressure develop now across uh, the, the Red River here of Oklahoma and Texas with some of that precipitation making its way into um, at least into portions of Missouri, Iowa, and Illinois, or I'm sorry, Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana. Uh, what I will say is that uh, this is really going uh, through some changes as we watch each model run come in. So we're only talking five to six days into the future, but uh, I've got high confidence in uh, this pair of waves existing. And when I say a pair, uh, I'm talking about this one and then the one that comes in behind it here uh, as we get into um, into um, the Tuesday and Wednesday time frame, this loop uh, cuts off right here before it comes in. I apologize for that. Uh, but this is the wave that I'm talking about looming on the backside. This one eventually sweeps in uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday. So my thought here and what I'm trying to convey to you is that we've got high confidence in these two waves existing. We've got low confidence in how exactly they're going to evolve. Who's going to see the, the, the most precipitation? Where is this area of low pressure going to track? Are we going to see a more northerly track that brings us a chance for some snow on the north side? Is it a more southerly track uh, that has us mostly talking about some rain across the Ohio River Valley? Uh, my advice to you would be to, of course, check in with uh, the forecast here Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday as things evolve. But uh, just understanding the main point is that we are going to be quiet for four or five days as that area of high pressure sits over the region. So total precipitation through Friday to get us through the work week here. This is where we've got that snow across Nebraska and Kansas. But you notice elsewhere uh, from the Dakotas into the eastern Corn Belt, we're talking about nothing in the way of precipitation as we get through the end of the week. And if I add the precipitation here through sun or through uh, sunrise on Tuesday, so taking us all the way through Tuesday morning, the 25th of February, starting to introduce the chance for some precipitation across the uh, the Ozarks here into the Ohio River Valley, but still keeping things dry across the northern plains into the upper Midwest, an area that was hit hard by snow early in the winter and a place that's happy to see a relatively dry next five to seven days. Now, as we talk about temperatures, we'll watch those cooler temps slide in from the Canadian Prairie, but they do not have any staying power. Uh, as that area of high pressure sinks off to the southeast, we start to warm back up across the Corn Belt, seeing uh, warmer than average temperatures by the weekend into 
early next week. We will have to talk about some cooler air coming in on the backside of our next trough as we get into the mid to late next part of uh, uh, next week, We're talking about February 25th through the 28th, getting into the end of the week. Uh, but it doesn't, or the end of the month, I'm sorry, but it doesn't look like we're going to be uh, locked into any sort of brutally cold pattern on the backside of that one either. Just kind of riding this roller coaster temperature ride of, uh, you know, periods of warmth of 5 to 10 degrees warmer than average and periods of cooler temperatures 5 to 10 degrees cooler than average. So let's just finish with a look at high temperatures over the next several days. Your highs for the day today, coolest off toward the north, single digits in the upper Midwest, mid 40s to the mid 50s across the mid south. The front begins to sink across the region here Wednesday, getting into Thursday, and now we start to rebound, warming up Friday into Saturday with look at that expansive high temperatures near 40 degrees all the way into portions of Wisconsin and Michigan. Just a quick peek at your overnight lows here as we wake up tomorrow morning. Those overnight lows uh, 10 to 15 degrees below zero across the upper Midwest parts of the Dakotas. We do start to expand that as we get into Thursday morning, but then it is quickly erased here as we get into Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with high pressure sliding in over the region.